I'm Victoria. Today I'm making this video to tell you about my extraordinary pigeons and chickens and just what makes them so extraordinary. There are so many different kinds of pigeons in the world. But today I'm going to talk to you about three different kinds of pigeons. The first one is going to be a homing pigeon. This is my homing pigeon, Skylar. If I was to let her go, she would come right back. In Roman time, they were used to carry messages about sporting events like the Olympics. That's why today you see doves being released at the start of the Olympics. Two famous people that love pigeons are Queen Elizabeth and Elvis, which I think is so awesome. Thousands of years ago, pigeons were used as messengers in Egypt. It was their only way of communication. They still do this today, but I think it's super cool how they do this. You would tie a little note to their feet, and then you would let them go up into the air. And then they would come back, and you would get a message. It's almost like a telephone, how you text. But they used a pigeon as a phone. In more time, pigeons were used to send messages, and it was so important that the French and the British gave them honor awards. I think that they're pretty lucky, right? Yeah. I think it's so cool how pigeons are so important. They're also the most intelligent birds on Earth. I think that's pretty cool. You might think that another bird is more intelligent, but pigeons are pretty intelligent once you think about it. If I was to release Skylar, she would come home through bars behind this door. And these are very easy to slip through bars. And there's a door here to protect the coop from predators so no predators can come in. And you always have to make sure that you lock it because if you don't, the birds can come out and a predator can come in. And you really don't want that because then you'll have nothing left. Right, Skylar? Yeah, she agrees. Then you would put food here so that she knows that she should come back. But leave her hungry for a little bit. Because if she's not hungry, she probably don't, doesn't want to come and get that food right there. You might see your other pigeons come and try to nibble on the food too. Just try to make sure that they don't eat it all. Because if they do, Skylar won't have any food to come back to. Isn't that right, Skylar? That's right. behind this piece of wood that are very easy and light to get through, but nothing from behind can get out. These are, this door is here to protect the birds from predators from coming in. Always remember to close the door. The way to train, the way to train your homing pigeon is that when your little baby homing pigeon, you want to keep your baby homing pigeon inside the coop for about a month or two. Then you're just going to release her out in your backyard. Only in your backyard first. Then maybe you want to do a mile away or another mile and just keep going farther and farther and then your baby pigeon will be trained. I took a short little walk with Skylar. I'm going to release her now and she's going to go back into the coop. While we're waiting for Skylar, I'm going to open the door so she can get back in. I'm also going to put some food on there so she could see it. I'm going to put some food on the inside and the out so she could see it and eat it. You might see a lot of other birds right here, but they're hungry too. to open. Skylar will know that she has to come back. Now we'll leave the door open and keep an eye on it. Skylar will be here soon.
also many different kinds of pigeons besides the Homer pigeon. There's some with really pretty and different kinds of tails, like this lovely beauty I have here. She's a fantail pigeon. See that magnificent tail? It's pretty, isn't it? There are different kinds of fantails. There are white ones, gray ones, black ones, all different kinds. Some of them are Indian fantails. The only way you can tell that is a little thing you see right here and booties. Mostly the booties. I think that's easier to tell. They're magnificent and beautiful birds that you could just have walking around in, in your backyard. The male is cream and the female is vanilla. One day they will mate and have babies. When a male and a female pigeon mate, they have two eggs. The male and the female take turns sitting on the egg. It takes about 18 days for the egg to hatch. When the egg hatches, the male and the female both make a special milk in their throats. This milk is called crop milk. Then they both feed it to their baby. After about 10 days, the baby is done with the crop milk and eats regular food. Then, after six to eight weeks, the baby is old enough to start its own family. think of a chicken you probably think of this but do you ever think of this I know I do there are many 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 different kinds of chickens my grandpa had a coop when he was a boy and he introduced me to these beautiful birds isn't that right Al? that's right introduce you to Afro. She is a Polish chicken. Don't let the name fool you. This breed is to a belief to originate from Italy. I would also like to introduce you to Princess over here. She is a white crested chocolate cuckoo Polish phantom. I know that's a lot. That's why I called her Princess. She's only a chick, but she's quite magnificent, isn't she? She has the same little Afro on her head, well I call him Afro, but the same little Afro on her head just like Afro. Funny, right? She's quite beautiful. Next, I would like to introduce you to Anna over here. She is a tollbent Polish. She has brown and black and white in her. Most tollbents are like this. She's a chick just like Princess, and she's also quite magnificent. She's the same age as Princess. This is my silky chicken, Larry. The way they get their name, Sookie, is because of their silk-like feathers. It feels more like fur than feathers. I happen to love this breed of chicken. It's kind of my favorite. Larry's a male. I have two other silky chickens that are females. Larry is a white silky chicken. My other one, Curly, is a reddish orangey silky chicken. And my other one behind us, Monique, well, she's a buff color. She's really pretty. One silky hen can lay up to 150 to 200 eggs a year. I think that's crazy. Also, a silky chicken has five toes, when usually a chicken has four toes. I think that's cool too. The main colors of a silky chicken are white, buff, black, blue, and partridge. I'm lucky to have Curly here. She's a red silky chicken. They're rare.
to want to mate your two chickens, I would suggest to soak you because they're great parents and beautiful birds. I would also like to introduce you to a frizzle chicken. They are referred to not as a breed, but to as a different kind of feathering that curls away from the body. For instance, Twilight here. She's a silky chicken with the frizzle gene. This is Elvis. He is a Polish chicken. He also has the frizzle gene in him. He's a beautiful and unique bird that I happen to love. He's also very rare. This is another frizzle that I thought you would like to see. Most of you know that a chicken lays a white egg. Some of you might know that a chicken also lays a brown egg. But how many of you know that a chicken can also lay a blue egg? This is Lavender. She's an Americana. She lays a blue egg, like this one. I'm so excited to talk to you about chicks because early this morning I checked out my bantam and there was a chicken there. It's so amazing to know that you're helping an animal live. I checked on my bantam, and with a surprise, I saw a chick under her. This is the little bantam chick. Isn't she adorable? She goes by the mother for protection from predators. The amazing thing about chicks is that they can walk, see, eat, and drink right away. cloth so no predators can get in. This is known as chicken wire. As you can see, a raccoon bit right through this. Even though it's metal. Crazy! Special tree, we're going to talk to a chicken breeder and expert. This is Trish, she's a breeder and a chicken expert. <laughs> when did you first get interested in chickens? Um, I was about your age. My grandmother, who lived in Jersey, had a lot of chickens and she was a breeder. I loved going to her house, I used to go in her backyard, chase all the chickens, started getting interested in um, just the different types of chickens that she had. and. Uh, the different types of eggs that she was getting from her chickens. I just found it all very interesting and I would go collect all the eggs out of the coops for her and I was just really excited to go all the time and visit mm -hmm. her and check out her chickens. So what's your favorite breed of chicken? 
I love all breeds of chickens, but my absolute favorite is the ones that lay unique color eggs, the ones that lay like blue and, and the dark brown eggs, or just different, anything that doesn't mm -hmm. lay a white egg. <laughs> I really yeah. enjoy the different chickens that are unique and fancy, mm -hmm. different feather types, frizzly chickens, anything that has mm -hmm. like um, an, an coloration that you normally don't see in a, in a typical chicken. Mm -hmm. So rare, fancy type yeah. breeds. I actually have a Polish frizzle. I love Polish. Yeah. They are the cutest. They with the big yeah. top hats. They're adorable. I yeah. love Polish. Mm -hmm. Me too. Yeah. My favorite breed is actually a Silky because I don't know why they're just. They're like cats that yeah. lay eggs. They <laughs> they're are. adorable. I love them. Yes, yes, they're adorable. I love Silkies. Mm -hmm. They're so cute. Very unique chicken. Yeah. So how old does a chicken have to be to lay an egg? Most chickens will start laying anywhere between 16 and 24 weeks. That's mm. the average. 16 yeah. is a little early, 24 is a little late, usually 22 weeks, something mm -hmm. in there. Sometimes as late as 26 weeks. Mm -hmm. but that's about the average for, you know, a chicken to start laying. We all wait for that first egg. When you, yeah. have, when you have babies, it's like every day you go out there, you're looking for the yeah. eggs. Eventually they come. They so I have come. a lot of chicks and they're not laying eggs and they're getting yeah. older now. Yes, so, so you should be getting close to that okay. first egg. That first egg is so exciting. Yeah. So, And when they start laying those first eggs, they usually are very funny looking eggs. They can be really small. They can, mm -hmm. um, some of them don't even have shells. They, they don't know how to put the shells on in the beginning. So it might take a few eggs before they figure out the shell part so you might have some crazy looking eggs in the beginning but it, it'll get it'll get really nice my hen just had chicks do you have any tips for me sure well to have a, a chick it takes about 21 days for the egg um, to be sat on by the mama hen before it'll hatch um, once it does hatch you want to make sure that you have some food chick uh -huh. food and a little chick waterer down low where the mama can take the chicks to go safely eat and drink from that and you want to just keep them in an area that's safe, predator-free, and you want to make sure that they can get to get into a nice little corner or something where the mommy can sit on them and keep them warm because they need to stay warm. Mm -hmm. If you were hatching them yourself in, say, like an incubator, yeah. it takes the same time, about 21 days, um, and you just want to make sure once the chicks hatch that you have something to keep them warm. It could be a light bulb. Um, they, they sell special heaters made just for that that keeps the chick about 90 degrees and you want to keep that baby nice and warm and, and give it all the chick food and all the water mm -hmm. that it wants. Uh -huh. And then every week after that we take it down about five degrees or so and then about four weeks old that baby can go outside. It doesn't need any more heat or anything. Just, mm -hmm. just needs to have friends <laughs> to go outside and peck around and play. Yeah. So will the other chickens try to attack the babies? Sometimes, but the mama will protect it. If it's with the mama outside of your coop, it, she'll protect that. She'll, she will really, really protect that chick. Mm -hmm. she'll, she'll die trying to protect her chicks. <laughs> so um, you won't have to worry about that. But yes, uh -huh. if you didn't have a mama and you incubated them artificially, mm -hmm. you would need to keep them off in a little separate area and keep them safe until they get a little bigger, mm -hmm. and then they can go with the big girls. Mm -hmm. And what do you do as a breeder? Um, I breed. <laughs> I love to raise chickens. Yeah. I love to raise baby chicks. And, um, you know, I, I like to create new types of chickens and combinations and mm -hmm. colors and stuff. So I, I just enjoy um, setting up baby mm -hmm. chickens and, and selling. And I love to, to introduce other people to the hobby of chickens. A mm -hmm. lot of people don't understand how much yeah. fun it is until you get your first chicken. And you're like, yeah. this is great. You know, yeah. you need a whole flock of chickens. I got my first batch of chicks when I was four. And it was just like so, so exciting. So exciting, right? Yeah, it's, it's awesome. It's um, so how do you like I have a bunch of females and a rooster and I don't know sometimes which eggs are like whose how would I tell do you that? have more than one rooster or just one no just one okay. rooster. well that one rooster um, will be with all of the females he is there to protect and take care of his girls um, as a breeder we usually recommend one male to every about 20 females wow. so um, yeah he'll be the daddy <laughs> for all of your females and all your chicks now, will he try to attack the chicks? No. Okay. He usually will be the, the protector. Him and mm -hmm. the hen will protect the chicks. Okay. He'll be very gentle and safe with your chicks. Mm -hmm. He's very good about that. <laughs> and he'll follow them around, and he'll make little clucking noises, and, and, le and that lets the babies and the mama know that he found a treat right here, and he'll call them over, come over and eat this yummy treat, and they'll, of course, run over and eat it. That's, that's his job, just protect and mm -hmm. find treats for his girls. 
And I also heard my rooster make this really weird noise. Was he cockadoodle doing? No, <laughs> but it was like. Oh, he was that's like, weird. Yeah, he was like being an evil type. And I was oh. just like. <laughs> sometimes they make strange weird noise. Sometimes they make strange noise when they hear like a predator overhead, a hawk or something. They the girls know the noises and they might make a strange noise to you, but to the girl they know what it is and they'll run off into the bushes because that means like be careful there's a predator. Or sometimes they just make a noise because they want to round the girls up and it's time to go in the coop for the night and you know they make another noise and the girls know to follow him in the coop. So they, they understand mm -hmm. what he means. He's the boss of that flock. Yeah. Thanks for doing this with me. Sure, anytime. Oh, uh, it's been great. I'm so happy to have somebody else who loves chickens yeah. too. It's great. And mm -hmm. hopefully there'll be other people in school yeah. that love chickens and want to get involved mm -hmm. in this hobby. Yeah. That's the end of the video. Thanks for watching. I hope you loved it.